Here we go back again with another video. Yes, and before we get into the meat and bones of tonight's video, I want to say a big congratulations to the five people who got the correct score on Saturday. Hull won, Sunderland won, and that was Angelic Skin 77, Brian Greener, Tom Devlin, Liam Nickel, and Alan Dixon all get a point in the big book of C. And now top of the table, there is a quadruple leadership. Liam Nickel on five points, Angelic Skin 77 on five points, Rim Reaper on five points, and Alan Dixon on five points. Four people top of the table, well done, absolutely fantastic. Now also, we're going to talk about injury news. Injury news at this moment in time. So the injury situation with Sunderland. Now this is what a few people have been saying. Are Sunderland a cursed club? Do Sunderland have a streak of unluckiness going through the veins of the club? Is it the black cat mascot? Or oh, that look, for me it's a load of bollocks, absolute bollocks about look. You make your own look in life and it's one of those things. But you can kind of see where they're coming from. Sunderland did spend four, Sunderland are the biggest club. The biggest club to drop out of the championship and spend the most seasons in League One. Now is that look or is that just bad management? Is that just bad ownership? Is that just bad choice of people buying the club? You may ask, you may say one or two things. First of all, the first season we made it to the playoffs. Under Jack Ross, we failed in the final. Second season was COVID-ridden and we lost out. Third season, it was Lincoln in the semi-finals. We got kicked out of the fourth season in League One. We finally got back to the championship. And now we've been riddled with injuries. I know what you're seeing. A lot of clubs are injured with Riddles with injuries, injured, in, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Injured, riddled with injuries, yes, riddled with injuries. But Sunderland have had their fair share, the lion's share, you may say. And now, since the World Cup, we've just getting back. We've got players back. We've got the likes of Gucci's came back. The likes of you know Ballard after this massive injury. Ballard had some sort of fracture. He's come back then and circling out for a long time. And of course Ross Stewart. Since Ross Stewart has been injured and out of the club, we have lost. We have lost something like six games under you know without Ross Stewart. Games like West Bromwich Albion at home two and one. Cardiff at home one and nil. Then we got Burnley at home four and two. Away matches to Blackburn to Swansea into the Borough. Six games is a chunk of losses. It's a bad loss. But we finally get the like of Stewart back. Finally get certain we get Goose back. We get Ballard back. We've almost got a full complementary of a team. But what happens on Saturday? Embleton, oh my God, Embleton, out for over three months. You can write off this season for Elliot Embleton. It is absolutely devastating for the young lad. I am absolutely gutted. It's awful seeing anybody get injured, but somebody so young and, and talented coming through with the club. I just wish him all the best in the future. I hope it's a speedy recovery and I hope it's not as bad as it is, but it's a, it, 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 it's a major injury. Over three months out. And then, of course, Danny Bart goes off the same game. No soon as you have Ballard on the bench, Stewart on the bench, you get two more injuries. Danny Bart is undergoing a scan today to see how bad his injury is. That could be, we don't know. Let's just touch wood, it's not as bad as it sounds, but that could be a bad one as well. He could be out for weeks. Then, of course, Pritchard would miss him with a calf injury. But Pritchard is not as bad. Now, Pritchards shouldn't be too far away. Realistically, not as bad. Still waiting for a scan on Danny Bart. And Embo just doesn't look good. It, it, you know, so is that bad luck? Or it's just one of those things. But we seem to be cursed with injuries some throughout the years. But are you happy at this moment in time with the ways things have gone in the season? Now, at the start of the season, I predicted we'd finish in 12th place at the end of the season. Because I know what's going through KLD's mind. I know what's happening at the club. You know, we, we, we've been cursed with the likes of Ella Short coming in. Just wasting all that money. Millions upon millions upon millions of wasting money getting the club in so much debt. And then finally selling us 
to Tom, Dick and Harry. We sell it to, to Sam and Pants and Stuart Donald and then them having no money. And now we sell it to KLD, who, you know, is supposed to have billions in the bank. His mummy's mother, his mummy's mother's money. His own money. When's he going to get this money? But is he, is he a shrewd man or does he have no money at all? Is he penny pinching? What's going on? Is he doing a good job at Sunderland, do you say? Do you think he's doing a good job at Sunderland? Buying youngster players? Because today there's an article saying there's a price tag gone out there for Stewart. The Sunderland have put a price tag on Ross Stewart. Now, is, if that's the case, for me, is that trying to scare off competitors? Or do we want to sell the club? Or is this total bullshit? Is this total bullshit? Sunderland's eight-figure asking price for Ross Stewart revealed as Rangers join Middlesbrough in the transfer chase. Now, come on. I can understand Ross Stewart. I can understand Sunderland. I can understand, you know, the guy wanting to go to the likes of Rangers. Try to get his career going with his Scottish international career. I can under, kind of understand them going to a top two, top three team in the championship who know they're going to push for promotion. And he could be in the Premier League next season. I can understand them going to a Premier League side. What I cannot understand for the life of me is if we sell it to the likes of Middlesbrough, a team that's below Sunderland at this moment in time. We have a much bigger you know, week in, week out, crowd capacity home and away than Middlesbrough. We've got to be making more money than Middlesbrough. But do we have the ambition under our owners? Is our owners not as good as Middlesbrough? Now, for me, if we sell Ross Stewart the likes of Middlesbrough, I'll be absolutely devastated. And that, for me, is a, is a, it's a statement of intent from the club, from the owners. Money, pension, you know, so... This, this, this bringing youngsters in and I like a rough diamond and polishing them off and selling them. That's not going to work eventually to get promoted to the Premier League, I'm afraid. But are you pleased with the season so far? Are you pleased? We're in 12th place. Let's look at the table right now. So like I said, here's the table right now. So in first place, we've got Burnley. Burnley having a great season. They, for me, are the only club that stands out head and shoulders above anybody else who really ripped us a new one at home in the second half. But the first half was a different kettle of fish. But I've seen them play a few times. And for me, at 9-1 to one at the beginning of the season, I thought it was a good good price. Now, they've won 13, they've drawn 8, and they've lost 2. And they're on 47 points. There are 6 points clear of Sheffield United with Blackburn. Unbelievable. Blackburn Rovers. We be playing those on Boxing Day. Stewart in the shop window for Blackburn. They've played 23 games and you, you, I just kind of believe what I'm saying here. They've won 13, they've lost 10 and they haven't drawn a game yet. They have not drawn a game yet and they could be in the top two in a couple of games time. So great start from Blackburn. Watford have pulled up the table and Norwich in fifth place. Now Sunderland are in 12th at this moment in time. We are only three points, yes? You've heard it here first. Pardon me. We're only three points off sixth place. I know Millwall have a game in hand and they're a point above Sunderland. That's how tight this table is. Look at the tightness of the table from sixth all the way down to 15th. And we'll show you the bottom end of the table now. As you can see, Sunderland have won eight, drawn seven and lost eight. We've lost four away from home. Let's chat about Sunderland. We've lost four away from home and we've lost and we've lost four at home. Four away from home and four at home. Now, the home table of Sunderland, we'll move on to the home table of Sunderland. We've got a poor home record. We play, we were in 19th place. We've won three, drawn four, lost four with 12 points. Now, our away record is slightly better because we've played one more game away and we've won five, drawn three, lost four on 18 points. We are fourth in the away table. At this moment in time. So that is good away form. The home form is pretty poor. That needs to improve massively. Now bottom of the table. We'll go at the bottom end of the table. Sunderland on 31 points. Now the bottom three. Huddersfield on 19. Look well adrift at this moment in time. Wigan Athletic was a team I said would be relegated this season in 24. 24 points. 
Blackpool 24 points. So we're seven points off relegation, six off the playoffs, seventh off relegation with Rotherham down there, another team I thought would be relegated this season. So if I predicted 12th place at the start of the season, I cannot be disappointed with how we're doing at this moment in time. Bang on the money, exactly 12th place. Seven points off relegation, six off Six off the playoffs. Now, for me, it's all about the Jan January transfer window to see which way we go. If we sell Ross Stewart and we don't bring anybody else in, for me, we'll, we'll be going dropping down like a bag of shite. I'm sorry, but I think we will start to drop down the table eventually. We cannot go through the season without another striker coming in. So if we do sell Ross Stewart, unfortunately, hopefully we do not touch wood. We're going to have to buy in another striker. But... We're going to hold clubs ransom. Are we going to hold clubs ransom for Ross Stewart? So are we going to get more money for Ross Stewart? But then at the same time, on the other hand, other clubs are going to hold Sunderland to ransom because they know we sold Ross Stewart. We know we have the money off Ross Stewart and they know we're desperate for a striker. So it's catch-22. We've got to keep Ross Stewart in the, in the January window. I've been told... You know, on good information that the chances are he'll stay in the January window. Now, it's not a hundred percent sure. That's just what I've been told, and he's almost certain to probably go next season. Well, we'll be stuck in Championship. He'll want better. So there we go. So far, it's not a bad. It's not a bad season. We played every team. Best team I've seen so far is Burnley. And the teams that we got beat against, Berra weren't that good, to be honest. But we did have a, a bit of a makeshift team because Ross Stewart, that's when he got injured before the game. Swansea, you know, we started off, we, we, we were a team of two halves. 45 minutes good, 45 minutes average of 45 minutes average, 45 minutes shite of 45 minutes good, 45 minutes shite. We kind of get a full 90 minutes. That's where we need to bring in one or two experienced players in the transfer window and secure our place in the championship, if not try and just go and push a little bit for the playoffs. So there we go. That's just my opinion. I'm content at this moment in time. I'm disappointed on some side of things, some where some of the games have gone. I'm disappointed with the scenario with Ross Stewart, because I want to see Ross Stewart sign that contract. I would love it to see a nice Christmas present of Ross Stewart to sign that contract. <clears throat> but at the same time, we're not... In the trap door, we're not down there, but like Sir Wigan and Rotherham, who Kate got promoted last season, so we are doing the better of the three. So I'm happy on that scale. So there we go. It's it's about scales. It's about the scales. Which way or which way with a pendulum turn after the January window? I'm hoping that we secure his contract, Ross Stewart, and we'll keep Ross Stewart till the end of the season at least. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. You let me know. Are we a cursed club or is it a load of absolute bollocks? Personally, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in, in cursed clubs. You make your own luck and what happens, what happens. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. And enjoy your Christmas. I'll do a match preview sometime before Christmas because Boxing Day, when we play Blackburn, at half past fucking 12 for the courtesy of Sky Sports. How many times this season are we going to beg, beg, beg Sky Sports to put our games on Sky so we can get to, to Kale Dake and Philly's pockets? Use that money hopefully, to get some good players in or some extra players in the genuine window. Take care. God bless and we'll see you later. Thank you for watching.